Hello, welcome to another installment of the Central American Group's podcast, in which experts discuss topics related to doing business in Costa Rica, El Salvador, and the rest of the region. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Central American Group's podcast. We speak with people who have an expertise in economic and industrial issues that are occurring in Central America. Today we have a, a couple of very nice ladies from Costa Rica. They are from the country's Economic Development Promotion Agency, which is called Sinde. And I'll let you ladies introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your organization. Thank you, Steve, and hi, everyone. My name is Carolina Sanchez, and I'm the lead of the life sciences sector at CINDE. CINDE is a non-for-profit uh, private organization which supports foreign direct investment into Costa Rica. We were founded in 90, 1982, and since then we have been supporting companies um, establishing successful operations in the country. Hello, everyone. My name is Irene Pacheco. I'm also part of the life sciences team here at CINDE. And as Carolina was mentioned, what we focus on is enforced uh, foreign direct investment attraction. And basically we take companies hand in hand through the whole installation process. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, the medical device sector in, in Costa Rica, which is the most prominent manufacturing center in the sector in the country. Um, Costa Rica has become a preferred uh, location for medical devices. As a matter of fact, it's the second largest exporter of medical devices in Latin America. What are the reasons behind that? Yes, um, we can mention a lot of different reasons, Steve, but maybe um, we'll start with our main uh, focus, which is talent. I think Costa Rica has a great talent and that has attracted many companies. You have to understand that this is a highly regulated industry. So companies are very focused in quality. And that's why having a strong talent pool, is very important for them. Also, we as a country have a very stable investment climate. That means uh, there is a combination of um, characteristics of the country that make it ideal for for your investment and for medical devices itself. Uh, and it has to do with the incentives. It has to do with the collaboration that we have uh, between companies uh, and also the proven track record. And I'm gonna pass it to Irene because uh, she can add a little bit on that as well. Sure, uh, talking specifically about the proven track record and this is definitely a key aspect when companies choose Costa Rica. We have over 80 companies installed in the country so uh, this has set a precedent uh, showing out the world that we know what we're doing, that we understand, that our talent understands the regulations that the sector require. We have over 40,000 people working currently in the medtech sector. And another of those areas, um, important areas, it's definitely the, the taking a look at the different clusters of what that we see all over the world. Costa Rica, such as Costa Rica, Massachusetts, California, there is a high concentration of medical device manufacturers, and this is definitely not, not a coincidence, right? Um, all these countries also have, and, and Costa Rica particularly, has a, a set of, of, um, of values and a set of incentives that are important for companies in the world to, to be able to come and install here locally. Could you tell us a little bit about how the medical device industry in Costa Rica has evolved over the last few decades? Sure. Um, and maybe we can go back a little bit in, in the history of our country and our development. Um, Costa Rica for several decades was very focused in agriculture. And in the 80s, the government uh, focused in a new economic development model, which was based in high tech experts. Uh, and with that came the approval of the Friedrichsen regime. The Friedrichsen regime is a set of incentives that offers um, the companies that establish operations in the country access to um, rates that are differentiated compared to the companies that operate locally. So um, that was a huge booster for the industry. Then um, 
in the 1980, late 1980s, we started having um, the first medical devices company here, which was Baxter. Uh, and they, they installed in the first free zone park that we have in Costa Rica in, in Seda, in Cartago. And since then, they start growing. At the very beginning, they only did um, very simple assembly and components. They used to bring the components here and do simple assemblies. And with time, they start doing extrusion and molding and some other more complex process in Costa Rica. Then we reach a maturity level um, with some other companies. Uh, and, and in the early 2000s up to today, that's when we have a very significant growth. And we can talk a lot about uh, success stories, which are the examples of the companies that have grown in Costa Rica and today they have um, much more mature and complex operations. Maybe, and maybe to add, to complement, we can we, like we mentioned some of these examples that, that Carolina just mentioned. Uh, Boston Scientific is one of those companies that established back in the early 2000s they currently have over five, five sorry, 4,500 people working in the sector, two different facilities. They have over 250 engineers doing R&D from the, from the country. So at, at the very beginning, we were doing very basic and simple assemblies. And as of today, we do much more complex processes, even considering R&D. Another of those examples, it's ICU Medical. ICU Medical has over 20 years in the country. They consolidated uh, 12 different facilities into one. They are vert vertically integrated. They have same over 3,000 people working for, for, uh, for them here in the country. So them, uh, they are one of these other examples of vertically integration uh, and important examples for us in the country. Well, now that you so the medical device uh, business in Costa Rica, did you see an impact uh, or have you seen an impact in recent months as a result of what's going on uh, with the virus pandemic that everybody in the world is dealing with now? Sure, sure Steve. And I think all industries um, somehow had have an impact. And uh, in the medical devices industry, what you really need to understand is that um, we were focusing on continuing operating because the hospitals were needing you know, the devices and the support. And so what we saw at the very beginning was a lot of uncertainty. Um, the companies didn't know what the governments were going to do in terms of full shutdowns and, and curfews and all of that. Uh, so there was a lot of uncertainty. Uh, also, we can say that we have two different um, trends during the pandemic. For in one hand, we had the devices that were needed in the hospitals, like the ventilators and uh, the infusion pumps, which were uh, on high demand during the pandemic. But also we have um, the, the surgeries, for example, orthopedics and, and all, the, all of those surgeries that could be postponed that also suffer um, decrease in the demand. So we have this uh, but what I think is very positive is that we develop a very strong work network of collaboration during the pandemic between the companies, the government, also seeing that was involved in there, in there, we have a working group. So we were sharing information uh, on, on real time on what's, what's going to happen. And the government never uh, put strong restriction on, on the uh, manufacturing operations. So the companies could continue to work. Actually, uh, we have seen cases in, in which uh, companies that have different footprints all over the world, they look for Costa Rica because uh, in other locations, they have complete shutdowns of their operations. So places like California and some other places in Asia. So the operations in here were able to respond while their other factories were, were closed. So that was very positive. And important maybe to mention that even though we had no disruptions in the country particularly, we can definitely tell that there were disruptions in the supply chain globally, right? And this brings me to the, to the phenomenon that it's not that new actually, but that we are starting to see uh, much more these days called the near story, which is basically when companies want to have a closer footprint to their customers 
to meet with the main objective of minimizing risk, right? So this has definitely put Costa Rica on the map even more. Despite of all the all the beautiful things that we mentioned at the beginning, this is one of, of the of the phenomenons that we are seeing today. A lot of companies interested in taking a closer look at what Costa Rica offers due to their needs of um, being closer to the customers and minimizing the risk uh, of being uh, all over on the other side of the world over in Asia and Europe. Yeah, and, and also complementing on what Erin was mentioning, um, we have seen an increase in the number of companies interested in Costa Rica as an option to depend less on Asia. And uh, there is a lot of benefits there. For example, we have the same time zone as the US. Um, you're closer to your customers, as Sarin was mentioning. Uh, we're a very open economy to trade. So all of that has made us a, a strong option for nearshoring. Well, this is a very interesting development for Costa Rica. And basically, we know that one of the reasons that you just mentioned for companies uh, that come back to places that are closer to their customers is a need to, to access markets. So what makes Costa Rica a good place for these companies to access their buyers? Thank you, Steve. Um, I'll say that uh, we're a very small country, but we're a very open to the economy because of that. We cannot depend on what we produce and sell here. We need to open our borders to sell uh, to other countries. And that's what has made Costa Rica very successful. Um, today, we have 15 free trade agreements um, that will give the companies that operate in Costa Rica preferential access to those markets. We also have 58 trade partners uh, globally. And basically, that translates into companies having the possibility to sell with preferential um, rates and preferential um, access to two thirds of the world population. So that has been a, a very well perceived uh, benefit of Costa Rica uh, in here. And um, also now that we were talking about near shoring, Asia has been a market that has uh, gained importance for Costa Rica. The US, of course, continue to be our number one uh, trade partner because of natural reasons, we're very close to them and, and, and historically has been uh, one of those destinations to where companies expert. But more recently, Asia has been very, very important for us. Before we wrap up, I'd like to ask uh, a question that uh, I, I think the answer is important that people know. One of the things that Costa Rica has as a competitive advantage is the quality of its labor force. Maybe you can comment uh, a little bit about the resources that the country allocates to education and you know what are the things about the labor force that make Costa Rica attractive, especially to medical device companies? Sure. Um, well, that's a very interesting question, and, and that's something that it's always very attractive to companies. And yes, talent is um, our main competitive advantage, I'll say. Um, you have to know that Costa Rica doesn't have an army, so all of those resources are allocated to halt and education. And um, in here, education is free and mandatory. Uh, primary and, and high school education is free and mandatory for everyone. So that makes that everyone in here um, who is born in Costa Rica should have a good quality education. We also rank very high in the education compared to other countries in Latin America. And also talking about the culture and, and, and I guess you'll see it when you, when you come here, we have a very open uh, culture. We're very curious as Costa Ricans. So what companies sometimes mention is that when they have manufacturing operations in here, um, sometimes they um, find very creative solutions from the people in the production floor because they are not uh, shy when it comes to talking about new ways of doing things and proposing new things. Uh, they're very enthusiastic uh, when, when the companies 
try to implement changes and things of that nature. So I'll say that's what it's very unique to our culture. And, and one of the my understanding that Costa Rica has a very high level of bilingual workers available. Yeah, yes, that's definitely another key aspect for, for the direct labor specifically on the manufacturing companies. Gladly, this isn't something that, that companies don't really need at the, at the very beginning for this specific uh, type of labor. But when we talk about administratives and the, the positions that I mentioned at the beginning, that two, over 250 engineers that Boston has, and not just Boston has R&D operations, right? I just men mentioned it, it's because it's one of those um, success stories. But definitely English, English proficiency. We are second uh, best in English proficiency in Latin America. And this definitely makes a difference, not just in the manufacturing, but also in the, in the services sector, which is another one growing and important in the country. Yeah, another <laughs> point that I think we would be remiss if we didn't cover, you know, Costa Rica, in addition to having a good workforce, a bilingual workforce, uh, has a very attractive program through its its free zone entities that are located throughout the country. Could you tell us a little bit about the benefits that manufacturers can enjoy when they locate in, in a free zone? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this is the fruitage of redeem that we basically talked at the beginning. Um, and it, it's basically an agreement between the companies that come and invest in the country and the government of Costa Rica. So the companies commit a certain amount of investment and employment, and in exchange, they will get a set of in incentives. The main one is um, a tax incentive that could range from 6% to 0% for eight years. So that means that companies that have operations in here could benefit from those um, preferential tax incentives. And there is also a number uh, of incentives that they're not expired. This is the only one, the, the corporate income tax. This is the only income, uh, incentive that will expire after eight years. But if the company continues to reinvest in the country, they can uh, restart the system and have another eight years or another six years, depending on where you are located. Um, and for the listeners, we'll be happy to discuss uh, this if you're interested. Um, that's what we do. So um, please feel free to, to reach out to us for further information on the Fruitage and Redeem. But um, I'll let Irene also talk about the incentives that do not expire, which are also of, of high value for the companies in here. The one that I would mention that's, I'm going to say one of the most important ones is the exemption on all imports and exports. So that basically means that since the, uh, well, after starting the process, but basically since the day that you start your operations, you're going to be able to import all your raw material tax-free and also be able to export tax-free. So this is definitely one of those incentives uh, that as Carolina mentioned, do not expire um, as, the, as the one that she just mentioned, which is the exemption on the corporate income tax, but one of, of, of the key ones for companies. Well, I'm sure um, that'll basically motivate companies to come and, and speak with you about potential uh, situations uh, in which their companies can set up in a free zone. But now to wrap it up, uh, what do you think is unique about Costa Rica and its med tech industry? Um, well, we, we have already um, covered some of the aspects that make us unique. But one that we didn't mention, and it's quite important, is that we have a very robust supplier base. Um, we have the OEMs or the original equipment manufacturers, which are the companies that will produce the, the devices that you will see in the hospitals. The person scientifics, the ICU medicals, all of those companies. But we also have uh, more than 60 suppliers that can support these companies with different components and different capabilities. Uh, for example, we have contract manufacturers, which are companies that can work with a product from prototyping to full development uh, on behalf of the, of the owner of the patent or, or the developer of the product. We also have companies that uh, have uh, machining, tooling, uh, extrusion, molding, heating, 
um, clean room supplies. So all of that, it's very important for, for this industry. You are basically a call away from your suppliers and, and that's very, very important for all of them. Another unique characteristic that I would definitely want to mention, uh, and we have been talking about this, but the collaborating mindset definitely makes a difference. And, and when you talk to companies installed in the country, this is one of the key points that they mention as an important aspect. Companies understood that working together as partners could definitely strengthen the sector and even more, and, and for all kinds of initiatives. Talent is also one of those initiatives where we where they work very closely and we work very closely with academia as well. So once they understood that this uh, would benefit them all, they started working together. And this is something that we uh, that we see from Cindy particularly um, in, in, in creating the clusters and in, in creating working groups between the managers. So collaboration is one of those key aspects that have made a difference. Uh, and boosted also the, the sector in the country. Okay, uh, basically what we try to do is create an environment that provides good information to our listeners. And we found over time that people who listen to our podcasts have inevitably questions that they like answered more detailed. Uh, could you tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you um, if they have questions that they want to follow up with. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, uh, we're, we're happy to answer all of those questions. Um, the best way to reach out to us will be through our, our website, cinde.org. Uh, in there, you can actually go to our profile and reach out directly to the different uh, emails of the different sectors that we that we support from here. Also, um, we'll be providing Steve with our LinkedIn profiles, so you can reach out to us as well through that. Well, is there any things that you'd like to mention before we close this very interesting session? Well, um, from my side, just an invitation. If you're curious about Costa Rica, please reach out to us. Uh, we will be happy to discuss your project and how Costa Rica could be a good fit for your company. Um, we love what I do. Uh, we love what we do. We love to support companies to establish operations in Costa Rica and, and we'll be happy to hear from your project. From my side, I might just add that you can definitely count with us and with Cindy particularly as an ally for your process, right? Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, we are a non-for-profit organization, and we will definitely be happy to provide all the details required and all customized information needed for the decision-making process, all the way up, up to installation. So just feel free to reach out. Thank you, ladies, for joining me today. And uh, I think that everybody is a bit more educated about medical devices in Costa Rica as a result of this podcast. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Steve. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you for listening. Sign up to receive the Central American Group's quarterly newsletter by visiting www.thecentralamericangroup.com. <laughs>